this. Number two is, ooh, another star. I like stars. Um, is learn your writing style. I should probably write these better now that I'm being filmed and things, but um, learn your style. Uh, it's, okay. Um, <laughs> learn your style. There are as many ways to write a good book as there are writers. And what's a good book for me may not be a good book for you. Sometimes you will pick up books in the bookstores that are selling well. You will look at this and say, this is utter crap. Why was this published? Why are people reading this? That's not a book for you. It's OK. Um, it's OK for books not to be for everybody. In fact, some of the things you write won't be for your writing group. We're going to try and learn to get good criticism even on something that is not necessarily targeted right at us. That's OK. Some of the things I'll tell you to try out in this class will not work for you. For instance, if you are really a binge writer, then this whole slow and steady thing may not be the way that you approach a book. And it may just be something you try for this semester and you say, no, I've been ha I was having more success taking you know, the summers and writing a book during the summers and binging on it and then editing and doing writing groups with it the, the other eight months of the year. That's OK. But <clears throat> the goal is for you to try these things out to learn your writing style figure it out. A lot of the stuff that writers will give you as advice is actually <clears throat> advice of something to try out, not advice of something to do. A good example of this, one I usually like to use in the first uh, week of my class, is the, uh, the difference between uh, the gardeners and the architects. How many have heard me talk about this before? A few of you have because you take the class too often or you watch things, but that's okay. Um, so, writers tend to fall on a continuum between uh, what George R. R. Martin likes to call the gardener and the architect. Um, we also, I used to use the phrases um, uh, discovery writer, this is another good one, and outliner. I don't like uh, discovery and outliner as much as I once did because any, any writing process, there's going to be discovery. And it, when you're outlining, you know, sometimes it dredges up Im, um, images from your childhood at high school, which may not have been that long ago for some of you. Um, I feel so older every time I teach this. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's not like it's heading A, sub paragraph B, you know, bullet point three, <laughs> word. I mean, that's not what we talk about when we talk about an outliner. An outliner is really a planner. And a discovery writer is, um, is, is, a, is a seat of the pantser, um, as, as one of my friends likes to call it. And writers tend to fall on this continuum somewhere. You should try out both. Both methods are good. A discovery writer is, um, is Stephen King is a discovery writer. Stephen King says for him to start a book, he needs interesting characters in an interesting situation, and then he writes and sees where it goes. That's fun for him. That's productive for him. <coughs> Whereas strict outliners, um, such as Kevin J. Anderson, Kevin creates a very detailed outline of a paragraph by paragraph explanation where each paragraph is basically a chapter for himself and for the publisher. And then he takes that paragraph and he reads it again and he writes the chapter according to what that paragraph says to do. He is a very strict outliner. He gets everything down on the page um, before he even starts writing the book. He knows exactly where things are going. Um, you are probably in between here somewhere. And beyond that, in a given book, you will slide back and forth, depending on how that book is going and what works for you with that specific book. And in this class, one of the, your goals should be all these things I talk about saying, OK, I'm going to try discovery writing. Discovery writing, and I'm going I'm to write a scene with no planning at all. I'm just going to go into it, the characters, here's the situation, let's see what happens to them. And see if that creates fiction that you enjoy that you had a good experience doing it, that you're proud of when you're done, and it helps you continue forward. We're all looking for stuff that helps you continue forward. Next time, you will try outlining. You'll say, OK, what's going to happen in this chapter? What's our kind of climax of the chapter? What's our rising and falling action of the scene? Um, what are the conflicts we're addressing, and how is this part of our, our greater outline? How are we moving toward, you know, um, What's our goal for the book, and how are we moving toward it in this specific um, in this specific chapter? And you'll write that chapter with everything planned out ahead of time, and you'll see if that works for you. Try different things. 
find out where you are. Uh, I am actually right around here on this for almost all of my books. What this means for me is I tend to do a lot of outlining for my world building. I like a, a really spectacular setting that's, that's very interesting. I like to have all these things seated in it. And I like to have a pretty good plot outline before I start. Uh, so I want to know where I'm going. If I don't know where I'm going in a story, uh, usually the story turns out poorly for me. I've got to have a goal in mind. I've got to have something to shoot for. And so I will build myself an outline, and we'll have an entire lecture on how, to, how I build an outline, so don't worry about that. But I will build myself an outline, and I will work from it, but I discover right my characters. I will cast different personalities in this role. Um, I will write a few scenes, and I won't know my characters until I write them. And after I know who they are, I may have to go back and revise my outline. I may write along for a while and say, the person this character is developing into won't do what's in the outline. I either need to pull that character out and try something else there, or I need to revise the outline depending on what I think is going to make a better story. And that's how I build a novel. Um, Dan Wells is more over here. He's not the huge, he's, he's a pretty big discovery writer, but he um, has found that having a last chapter in mind before he starts discovery writing fixes so many problems with his books. And that inch to, like just a step over this way, where now he likes to not never start a book without at least having in his mind or even a rough draft written of the last chapter. And then he can discover it right his way there. But if he knows where he's going, it'll be better. Um, these are just things that, that you'll become aware of as you practice. You'll learn that discovery writers tend to have weak endings but strong characters. And you'll learn that outlining tends to create really explosive plots, but sometimes characters that feel wooden, that they're just following um, you know, steps along a path that's been set out for them. And you'll try maybe to find some balance in between that'll help you do the best of both worlds. I do have a, a friend, um, Caitlin, who is one of the most discovery of discovery writers I know, and what she will do is her first draft is her outline. She will write beginning to end a first draft with, without any planning, then she will sit down and say, okay, I will use this to make my outline, and I'll write the book over from scratch, starting on page one, now knowing all the important beats of the, of the book ahead of time and knowing where I'm going. Create some fantastic books for a discovery writer where um, normally she has trouble with plotting and things like that. This helps out. So, you know, you'll find different processes to work on to help you become a better writer. So, you're going to learn your style. Hopefully, I'm going to throw a lot of tools at you, and you're going to practice using them. All right? Yeah. What's that? Oh, I lost my mic. Woo. Thank you. Thank you very much. 